Hello, I'm Jayshree Kulkarni and I'm Professor of Psychiatry and I'm Director of the Monash Alfred Psychiatry Research Centre. Monash Alfred Psychiatry Research Centre is a unique research centre in that we're actually, as our name sounds, boring as it is, but we're actually part of Monash University and we're part of the Alfred Hospital. Now we're based at the Alfred Hospital, we're actually a little bit one block down in this beautiful setting, but we actually belong to two big organisations and that is fantastic because it means that our research is in the real world setting of a hospital with real world patients who have their considerable problems in their mental health area is but we have the expertise of a G8 university, Monash University, to back us up with all of our research um, tools and uh, the thinking and so on. So it's, it's a real translational form of clinical research that we do. MAPRC, the Monash Alfred Psychiatry Research Centre, broadly has five areas of research. So there's women's mental health, there's neuropsychiatric technology research, there is psychopharmacology, there is services research, and there's cognitive psychiatry research. So they're the five broad areas. There's a lot of projects in each of those. But we've had some really fantastic world firsts in all of these areas. In the women's mental health research area, we've had world firsts with using hormone treatments, estrogen and other hormone treatments to actually treat conditions like schizophrenia, depression and so on. We also have a national register of antipsychotic medications in pregnancy, the first ever register of these medications in pregnancy around the world. So we're really delighted when these world firsts happen for us because it does help us raise the profile of that area of work because we want other people around the world to be able to provide these translated treatments for their patients and their people suffering from these conditions. In the psychiatric neurotechnology area, which is headed up by Paul Fitzgerald, the essence of that is that he and his group are using various forms of brain stimulation, magnetic fields, so that's transcranial magnetic stimulation. Again, he's a world leader in using the magnetic field stimulation to treat depression and to treat other conditions. And there are various forms of that particular stimulation from transcranial direct stimulation right through to deep brain stimulation. And again, they're world firsts in a number of these new treatment areas. In psychopharmacology, we have a number of clinical trials which are actually about the new drug treatments and again we work with the pharma industry here and um, we trial the, the latest of the latest in terms of the best drugs and the newest drugs in schizophrenia, depression, bipolar and so on. In the services research area what we're doing is actually developing up our new services. So part of this is also about um, translating the research because there's no good having these great discoveries but then really only publishing them in, in sort of journals that, that only the learned will read but we actually need to make sure that it gets out there into the public domain. So the services research has partly got the evaluation of the research and translation into service but also is our bridge between our research and the hospital and so we do a lot of work with the clinicians in the hospital so we've set up projects that are again world leading looking at for example um, working with the police force in in mental health and how to improve that particular liaison that's an example and there are many other examples but um, health economics is part of that area as well because we want to make sure that um, we're using the dollar wisely and the dollars are scarce so they've got to be used wisely so that's another area of research in the, in the health services research division that we have here. And then we have cognitive psychiatry, which is all about thinking and um, it's all about the higher executive functioning of the way we actually think in health and in illness. And so again, um, Professor Susan Russell and her group work in that area and uh, conduct a lot of research looking at particular skills in higher thinking. So. Of course, I've made it sound like there are five separate areas, and there are five areas, but there's enormous crosstalk between the areas, and I think that's the other part of having an integrated research centre that we actually uh, do experience a lot of throughput between the different areas, which then leads to more complex and important um, projects.
Currently at MAPRC we have about 160 people attached to our centre, about 60 are actually on site. We are undertaking 102 projects at the moment. They're all with human beings and this is, this is one of the things that's really important is the work we do is all about the different illnesses that people experience in the mental health sector. Depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, autism, anxiety disorders, um, all of these conditions are what we're trying to find new treatments for. So that's our big, our big push is to find new treatments. We're also trying to get better understanding of why these conditions occur in people and also we're trying to then develop new services. So as well as being a research centre, we actually also have our own clinics. And um, the benefit of this is that the clinics actually are the place where we can translate what we're finding in our research discoveries and, and actually employ them into real world new treatments. So it's a very exciting area to be working in because diseases of the mind are really going to be the next challenge that we have in medicine. Depression is a huge disorder. Psychosis is another huge disorder. And as we've got better and better with people living longer and being more mobile in their older age, we also want them to have a good quality of life. And something like depression can really destroy people's lives as well as their families and, and the rest of our community. So that's why it's really important that we're working in this, in this area to get new treatments. I work in the area of women's mental health. And I particularly work in this area um, of looking at the hormone impact um, the such things as estrogen, progesterone and other female hormones and their impact on mental health. Now it's a very underdone uh, area around the world but uh, from my clinical experience women out there are very clear that they want a new approach, new approach for such things as perimenopausal or menopausal depression, new approaches for such things as cyclical depression, new approaches to postnatal um, conditions, new approaches to illnesses that affect both men and women but differently and you don't really see about the treatments that are tailored for women and that's part of what my group and I work on is trying to tailor new treatments that specifically target the things that affect women. We're working on new approaches in using hormone treatments in other conditions, for example schizophrenia. So men and women equally experience schizophrenia, but they experience it at different ages. And so one of the things that we've seen is that women are older when they develop schizophrenia for the first time. There's often a hormone component to experiencing relapses of schizophrenia. So for all these reasons, we're using hormones estrogens, we're also using new types of estrogens, the brain estrogen, um, to actually help with the particular symptoms that women experience. I'm delighted with the results that we've got um, to date from our studies. We've had some NHMRC trials and we still have several going on and the, the studies have shown that in fact the hormone treatments work really well for women and um, so adding estrogen to the treatment has actually improved the psychosis symptoms enormously and allowed women to actually have a better recovery and uh, go on to actually have a better quality of life so that that's really encouraging that's what we live for actually is when we get somebody better so it's not just the sort of um, perhaps the more traditional research goals which we have to fulfill which is publications and getting grants but for us it's actually the improvement in somebody's mental health that somebody can come to us and because of our new treatment approaches which are research backed that we can actually make a difference to that person's quality of life that they can go from not being able to be at work or to pursue um, education or to pursue a relationship to actually having all those things happen for them. That, that just, you know, we run around on a high when we can get something like that happening. We have a really vibrant group of people working here. Um, they're all pretty young, so it does mean that there's a lot of noise, a lot of mess, and a lot of um, ex activity and excitement. But what drives us is that clear focus about new treatments for people with mental illness. And so when we do make a difference and we can see that our treatments are helping people with mental illness get better, 
it is a wonderful buzz and uh, you know the, the group really comes together to celebrate these sorts of achievements with the, with the person. We also have a very um, non-hierarchical approach so that it is not about us and them. It's very much a collaboration between us, our patients and our, each other. There's also a lot of cross collaboration because we have different areas of research here so we have people with different expertise and that's fantastic because that's how new ideas come about. We have people from all different walks of research life. We have engineers, we have physicists, we have um, medical people, we have nursing, pharma, pharma, pharmacy, um, we also have psychology, but they're all different and so different disciplines have different ways of looking at the same problem and so in the tea room you can often get very intense discussions going on that lead to the development of new projects and I think that's part of the excitement of being in a big research centre but of having that real world focus with us all the time. The multidisciplinary approach that we have is rather unique and it is because we can bring together the hospital and clinics of, of a healthcare, big healthcare facility, um, one with a very prestigious name, the Alfred, with many different facilities and people from Monash University. Being a university uh, centre means that we can draw on people from the arts faculty, from the law faculty, engineering, as well as obviously our own uh, medicine, nursing and, and uh, allied health um, professionals. But we've got a vast and diverse group of people who work with us and that's really important because psychiatry and the field of mental health is broad, it's extremely broad and we need to actually look at solutions from places that, that possibly you wouldn't normally go to if you have a very narrow and defined area of research. So it's exciting, it's challenging, um, but it is I think the way of the future. I'm always um, come back to what Albert Einstein said which was to paraphrase him, you will not find solutions to a problem if you keep going to the same places and doing things in the same way. So we take that to heart here and we're very broad and we actually embrace the diversity and from the diversity we believe that solutions for new approaches to mental illness will come. I think MAPRC is a wonderful place for our early career researchers and for students looking for a particular research honours degree and, and higher doctorate degrees because in order to get um, a productive year or more, you have to have a group around you. It's not just a one person activity. Research is really virtually I think impossible to do as a solo activity. It's really a very important um, stimulating environment that's required and we have that here. We also have people who are experienced in the whole process of research which begins with thinking through an idea that might seem a bit um, crazy at one level but then having the idea is, is the first step and then shaping that to actually come down to a research question and then come down to a research method that's doable. All these things require experience and they, ex they require other people to be good mentors. So I think we've got that experience and it's not just one person, it's somebody who's got the stats experience, somebody who knows how to go to an ethics committee and how to write that um, particular application, somebody who knows about how to get some funding for that, somebody who's already got some funding for a similar project or one that this can be piggybacked into. Those sorts of things, those expertises are really important for a, a new researcher to start off with. The other thing is also um, that having somebody around to ask questions is, is vital because research can be quite a confusing experience particularly if you come from three years of having had lectures and tutes where it's all very didactic suddenly you get thrown into this ocean of this is research and you can sink or swim and I think what really makes a good experience is having people around who can answer those questions that you may not want to take to a supervisor who's very busy or very senior but it's having all of these people around. The other thing is the social experience because again having come from very didactic lectures where there are lots of students around and so on it can be isolating to go to somewhere that's very lonely to do research. So one of the things we do is we have a very vibrant group of um, younger people who actually do have social activities um, and that's really important as well. Just to have someone to have lunch with. 
you know, it can make all the difference between having a horrible, lonely experience and something that is pleasant and also gets the work done because it's really over the informal tea um, and coffee that you can ask those questions that you're worrying about that might actually hold up your research. So I think it's a vibrant, multidisciplinary centre that has a lot to offer. It's also about um, the experiences we have to offer. Many of our researchers are engaged in such things as organising conferences with us, um, helping us with some of the fundraising activities, helping us with other projects as well. So it's a whole experience of research, which I hope has really um, helped a lot of people to actually embark on a career of research in their own rights. And that's what I think is a success story.